right now, Christina Chenault, who earned a basketball championship this year in the North Coast section, Division II ranks. Now has a championship here for the girls' 400-meter dash. Boys are being called to their marks. As the girls receive their medals, the top performers of the 400 meter dash. Congratulations to them. And so the boys getting set to run this race. The 400 meter dash as they get up from their stretch and the gun has sounded and the boys are off. Lavelle Hamlin starting oh so fast out there in lane seven. It's only a matter of time before the other boys will start catching up to him. And look at Alexis Robinson out of Eureka in red making a hard charge as he's really turning it around. Through, corn, uh, through turn two. And now they're coming up through turn three, to the last and final turn here. And we'll see if Frank Kurtz can do something about it at the end as Frank Kurtz is trying his best. But it looks like this is going to be Alexis Robinson's victory to have. And it will be Alexis Robinson followed by Herbie Polk out of Maria Carrillo. And Frank Kurtz might have finished third. Alexis Robinson, congratulations. Yeah, as, as they took the turn for home, Alexis Robinson had that race in control and he did not re relent up on it. Uh, very strong finish for him. And um, we await the time. It looks like a 47.03 for Robinson. Polk finishing second with a 47.21 second run. And then my neighbor, Jeff Kurtz finishing third with a 47.65 mark. Frank Kurtz. Frank Kurtz, that's right. I think you, gave a, you gave a shout out there to our, to our boss Jeff there. Yeah. <laughs> used, to, used to go by Franklin when he was younger. I remember, his, his, uh, I remember playing basketball with him when I was younger. We used to have a basketball court down at the end of, at the end of our court. But he has since outgrown Franklin and now goes by Frank. And he's only a junior, so he still has some time to set better marks. But he will be going to state. And I'm sure he will be working very hard to finish his best down in Clovis next weekend. Well, as a 400-meter dash, athletes make their way over towards the podiums and the pole vaulting competition continues. On deck are kind of the, the spotlighted of the track and field races, if you will, with the 100-meter dash. It'll be the girls first. That's kind of the on-deck event, but everybody always loves to watch the 100 yard dash and see who's fastest. Alexis Robinson who had the 10th best mark of 47.79 seconds coming into this at state. And now with a 47.03 mark. That now ties Frank Kurtz for the best mark in the state this season. Wow, can really Alexis Robinson, and just think he's only a junior, so that battle between him and Frank Kurtz might, uh, might get a little spicier after this race here today. Yeah, mine, like you said, congratulations to Alexis Robinson for hitting that time when it counts most here in the NCS 
track and field championships, and we'll see how he continues to improve on that at state next week along with Kurtz and Carter. Kurtz and, uh, I'm sorry, Herbie Polk. I'm sorry, Herbie Polk. And actually, it seems as if Carter will make states as well as Griffith, or Kevin Griffin. So this is the first time um, that we've seen people outside the top three finishers that will get at-large bids as the mark the clip was set at 48.59 seconds. Well, that finally gives us a little, that finally gives us Northern California fans something to root for. And sure. We know we've been catching a little flack from our producer, Tom, who made his way up from San Diego. He's representing the SoCal contingency. Wow. Oh, actually make that six as Kozell uh, finishes as, as well with a 48.56 by point. Zero three seconds he makes it, does Andrew Cazell out of Healdsburg, but six of the eight qualifying for state in the boys' 400-meter dash here at the North Coast section meet of champions. Uh, it's great, like I said, for Northern California and especially NCS in, in particular here to be able to hit that mark. Uh, like you mentioned previously, we hadn't seen a lot of the participants in that, outlar in that at-large range making it in to state. But the 400-meter dash is certainly an area where uh, Northern California and the NCS section in particular has produced some very top-notch athletes. Pole vaulting continues and a nice clearance of the 13-foot, 3-inch mark again by another participant. So we look to see if it, obviously this pole will be getting raised again as we're working on determining a champion for the boy, boys' pole vault. And while we're talking about the boys' pole vault and while the boys are getting their medals for the 400-meter dash, it is important to update you on the women team rankings through nine events scored. Newark Memorial and Castro Valley have now climbed atop the, st the rankings as they are tied for first with 24 points apiece. Granada is third with 22 points. So just to keep an eye on the team rankings as the girls' 100-meter dash is now getting ready. Runners are at their marks. The favorite is Gabrielle Cantrell in lane four. Sarah Holt will be in lane one. Jessica Rasmussen from Tim Pius in lane two. Brianna Guillory from Deer Valley in lane three. Gabriel Cantrell from San Leandro, lane four. Camille Deadweiler from Newark Memorial, lane five. Lane six is Margaret Nobuzi from International, lane seven, Nicole Fetch from Amador Valley, and lane eight is Granada from Pamela White. A couple shots of the gun fire off. And the girls saying, what's going on? And wow, a lot of confusion in the stands as well, as typically a false start is, is notified much sooner and much clearer. In this case, I had never seen anything like that before where the gun goes off about four or five times. Typically, there's a, a separate sound that I'm aware of, but here, a lot of confusion, and the girls are making their way back, and hopefully that doesn't affect them too much because they made it about halfway down, about 50 yard, or excuse me, about 50 yards down the track before they realized what was going on. So, yeah, multiple shots fired off, and now even. Fans starting to get on their feet and wonder what happened there. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, that's a situation where you can have runners that are really pushing it for 50 yards down the track and then having to let up. Typically a false start, you know, you're, it's just a, a maybe maybe 10 to 20 yards and, and they, they know what's going on to turn around back. But It was very strange for, at our vantage point and for the spectators here as the girls were running full force down the track. We had multiple shots fired out of the starting gun, which was highly unusual. And as you can imagine, might have uh, made a few pe people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And Camille Deadweiler just stopped from Newark Memorial and raised up her hands like, what is going on here? Yeah. 
not exactly the sound you want to hear no. going off multiple times as a, the gunshot. I mean, we're, of course, accustomed to hearing the gun go off at the start of a race, but to hear it several times, uh, you know, yeah, I'm glad there wasn't a little bit more of a, of, a, of a panic than there was. I think it was just confusion, but... Maybe the guns with the automatic triggers are so light to the touch that they just uh, went off rather quickly one, at one after another. Well, as the girls go back there, just to let you know where the record stands for this event, for the 100 meters, the record was back in 2010, so fairly recently Ashton Purvis of St. Elizabeth High School in Oakland had an 11.17 time. Gabriel Cantrell with an 11.76 time this year. At once was 14th best in the nation and it also was 6th best here in the state of California. She set that back at the Sacramento Meet of Champions on April 27th. The same year that Ashton Purvis hit that record of 11.17 in 2010. She also got the record for the 200 meters in 2010, the same year with a 22.9. So fantastic year that was for Ashton Purvis. And so there are some similarities being made now as I look at it between Purvis, a former two-time winner, and now Gabriel Cantrell, who Gabriel Cantrell has been very strong at the 200 this year as well. Actually, her time in the 200, a 23.97 second best for fourth in the nation. But right now, it's all about the 100-meter race. I, I think what you're seeing here, too, is that really the officials are almost admitting that they made a mistake there in some capacity because the girls are getting quite a bit of extra time to reset themselves, to rewarm up as well, make sure that they're feeling okay. Typically, I mean, if it's just a simple false start, they get back in those starting blocks pretty quickly. But right. here they are allotting them that extra time, knowing that that was highly unusual what had taken place. It's a beautiful day, nonetheless, here in Berkeley, California. The site city of the 2013 North Coast section meet of champions. Michael K. Smith, also known as Mike on the Mic, alongside Dave Shepler. Also have Hans Webb doing the video for us. And, of course, Thomas Comroy doing the producing. Made the trek all the way up from the southern Sa uh, Southern California city of San Diego. Here, almost about ready to resume. As the girls will once again get set. The best time in the prelims was Gabriel Cantrell out of San Leandro, the junior, with a 12.12 second clip. Not far behind and tied for second best were Brianna Guillory and Camille Deadweiler, both with a time of 12.22 seconds. And the runners are on their mark, so let's give it another go. And they're even waiting to delay the boys' championships as the gun has sounded. No more multiple shots fired after, and so this is the real deal, and it's going to be... Camille Deadweiler from Newark Memorial. Make that, I'm sorry, Gabriel Cantrell out of San Leandro taking home the title. In lane four. And in some ways that's good to see for Gabrielle Cantrell. First of all, congratulations to her for, for winning that race. But she was also the runner who had the lead in the previous uh, start before the fall start. So I was hoping she wouldn't be affected too much being that she had such a great start the first time around. And sure enough, she proved that she was the one to beat and took it home. So Gabrielle Cantrell with the first place finish in the girls 100 meter dash. And like I said, San Leandro having a pretty good day now as they have had three 
participants in three events all finish in the top three. First, they did it as a team in the relay race. And it looks like Cantrell's going to win that with a 12.15 time. So it didn't quite break the 12 second mark, but very good race, and she'll look to improve on that time even further in state. As a side note, the pole vaulting competition, we are now down to three boys battling it out as the pole has been now raised to 13 feet 6 inches. So bumped up another 3 inches as that competition continues. And here's an attempt on the 13-6. Up and can't quite get over. Alright, so the official times there. Gabriel Cantrell finishing first with a 12.15 second run. 0 0.03 seconds off her preliminary best. And then Camille Deadweiler finishing second with a 12.37 second clip. And then Brianna Guillory out of Deer Valley finishing in third with a 12.63 second mark. The CIF at large was 11.89 seconds, so there will be no more additional racers out of the girls 100 meter dash advancing to state from the north coast section and, you know as you mentioned a lot of these at large times are definitely difficult to hit I mean, we look at the boys 100 meter dash which is coming up the at large time is 10.65 and the fastest runner in the prelims was at 10.8 which was Miles Spiegel. So they certainly set those times uh, where they really have to, I mean, it, you're not breezing your way into the state finals, that's for sure. And, right. and boys quickly taking their mark here. And they are taking their mark rather quickly. That'll be the boys 100 meter dash. Trying to make up some time after the Girls false start delay. Will it be one of the Spiegel twins? Might it be Marquise Morris in lane one? A lot of talent here. Steven Johnson even a guy to look for in lane five. And Takaris McKinley in lane seven. The Spiegel twins are racing quite hard in lanes three and four. And it's going to be at the end a very close race. I can't even determine that. I think Karis Johnson got it in lane seven. Or Takaris McKinley in lane seven. Karis Johnson in lane two. I had an outdated sheet there on lane assignments, but yeah, it looked like lane seven from my vantage point. We'll see how it plays out. Takaris McKinley pounding his chest as if he were the victor. Takaris McKinley not too far from here out of Kennedy High in Richmond, and he would win. He will win with a time of 11.09 seconds. Corbin finishes second with a time of 11.12 seconds. And then Miles Spiegel finishes in third place. And again, we have a situation where we're not going to have any at-large participants there. Quite a bit off the at-large mark, but very nicely done by Takaris McKinley, who really came in as not the favorite in that race. At least we didn't call him as the favorite. Uh, and based on prelim times, those certainly were not some of the faster times we were expecting or looking for. So they'll all, I think, uh, all top three that are moving on to state will certainly look to improve on those times next week at state. Yeah, the 100-meter dash... Not a big time race here in the north Co in the northern California. It's more a southern California race as far as where the guys at the top are. But you gotta you gotta give Takaris McKinley his fair share of credit, winning that one narrowly by .03 seconds over Christian Corbin of Novato and Miles Spiegel. 
finishing third with a time of 11.13 seconds out of Castro Valley. And as that's all taking place, the girls 100 meter champion is, and the participants of that race are accepting their medals and awards. Congratulations again to those girls. Gabrielle Cantrell from San Leandro again, the winner of the girls 100 meter dash. The girls participating in the 800 meter run have been called to their places as that is the next track event. In the meantime, the pole vaulting continues. The 800 meter dash is ready to go as we await the gun. And so will he hit the mark of 13 feet six inches as the girls is underway here in the 800 meter run. with Nijay Jones out of San Leandro and uh, Sadia Alimatu Ebrahim out of Santa Rosa. Bishop O'Dowd's Keisha May, all seniors. Also in this competition will be Suzanne Becker, a junior out of Albany. Heidi Fuhrman, a freshman out of Monta Vista. Madison Ricks, who was last year's champion with a time of 2 minutes and 9.52 seconds. She's in it once again, a junior from California. Heather Hernandez-Shaw, a senior out of Pittsburgh. Kendall Stuskevich of College Park, who narrowly had the victory in a race earlier today, is in the mix, as well as Caitlin McKeough out of Terra Linda, a senior. James Logan Jr. Amihan August, uh, August, Augustine is in the mix. And then Maria Berrigan from Healdsburg and Courtney Burney from Deer Valley rounding it out. They're going to go one more lap, and this will be the last one. The top time at this event, back in the notorious year of 1981, Jessica Spies from Livermore High School had a two-minute, five-second, .84. And what I assume would be a younger sister Becky Spies of Livermore, 10 years later in 1991, has the second fastest time. Kendall Stuskevich trying to make up for the lead that she lost in the girls' 1,600-meter run earlier today. Can she do it? Nijay Jones leads coming down the final stretch from San Leandro. And it's a one-girl race to the finish. And it's Nijay Jones coming towards the finish line. And she will hang on for the victory. She and Nijay Jones just continuing the wonderful day of racing that it has been for the San Leandro Pirates. Yeah, she took that one rather easily at the end. And congratulations to all the participants as they make it across the finish line. Again, the 800-meter run is no simple task, that's for sure. We should get times here rather quickly of that girl's 1,600-meter run, or I'm sorry, 800-meter run, which was run, which was won by the senior, Nijay Jones. Uh, Winner of the boys 100 meter collects his medal on the podium to a rousing chant by the crowd. Very happy for him. He's the currently the fastest man in the North Coast section as of today. Wow. Takarist McKinley, who will be attending this campus as a member of the Cal California Golden Bears football team. 
next fall. Very fitting that he wins that 100 meter dash here on the campus of University California Berkeley, his future home. Getting a little head start. Coach Sonny Dyke so happy to get McKinley. A speedy defensive end prospect he will be for the California Golden Bears. As our world-class videographer Hans Webb focuses back in on the pole vaulting competition where it's currently sitting at 13 feet 6 inches. We're down to three vaulters. Who will come out on top of that one? Whoever it is, it'll be well-deserved. They've been going over that pole for hours. Yeah. Still set at 13-6. Really good contest in that boys' pole vault. Eight hundred meter boys getting set. And for them, it will be Adler Faulkner from Akalanis, a senior. Stephen Carlson, a senior out of Alameda. Cody Mayer, a junior from my alma mater, Liberty High School. Then Owen Jung, uh, Lejung out of Sonoma Valley, a junior. Followed by Jose Lopez, a junior out of Arcata. Austin Orr, a senior from Sonoma Academy. Dante Hay, a junior from Maria Carrillo. Christian Monsalud, a sophomore from James Logan. Jose Ordonez, a senior from San Rafael. Solomon D'Amico Ausman, a junior from Heritage. Corey Robinson, a junior from Lick Wilmerding High School. And then Joel Timbrell, a senior from Alhambra. That'll make up the participants here for the boys 800 meter run which is about to get started and they're off in the 800 meter boys run it's two times around the track for the 800 meters record for this one at these meets once again, 1981. Pete Richardson from Berkeley with a 1 minute 47.31 time. Wow. And as we look at that, we also want to take a look at that girls 800 meter run with... Najee Jones finishing it first with the 2.11.21. Second was Heidi Fuhrman out of Monta Vista, the freshman, with a 2 minutes 12.93 second run. Finishing third was Sadia Alamatu Abrahim with a 2 minute 13.39 second run. We'll get you caught up on the team standings and all of that in just a sec as far as the boys' long jump goes. We have that updated. And we have both the boys and girls updated for the team. The boys long jump finished with Karsten Wethington out of James Logan winning it with a 21 foot jump. 21 feet, or actually I'm sorry, 23 feet and 6 inches. Nate Moore finished second with a 23 foot jump and 3.25 uh, inches from Castro Valley. And Bryson Porch finishing in third from Casa Grande with a 22 foot jump, 11.5 inches. As we're now coming to the end of the race here in the boys 100 meter run. And it looks like Adler Faulkner from Akilanis is in the lead. Will anyone close in on him? There is a slight closing towards the end, but it will not get the job finished. As the man there in the shimmery black and gold top nearly came close to defeating Faulkner but it is Adler Faulkner hanging on for the victory. And I believe Steven Carlson, the man that finishes in second place from Alameda.
Faulkner gets a one minute 53.92 time with the win. Fantastic race on the 800 meter boys. Congratulations to those athletes. And we've got the 800 meter girls winners accepting their medals on the podium. First, second, and third place finishers there on the podiums and a lot of smiles and hugs. The boys long jump, it'll only be the top three going as 22 feet and eight inches was the mark needed to make it as an at-large. It's only Karsten Wethington, Nate Moore, and Bryson Porch representing the North Coast section of the boys long jump. And as for the updated team rankings, I'm sure we're going to be getting those right now. As well as maybe some cookies, a delivery of cookies. This is awesome. Cookies, cookies, cookies for everyone. So the updated women's rankings after the 800-meter run has San Leandro leading in the team category with 38 points, Newark Memorial in second with 32 points, and Castro Valley in third with 24 points. Granada closely thereafter with 22 points in the fourth place position. As for the boys, we don't have we don't have an update there. The latest update we do have with the boys had Amador Valley after eight events scored. This was after the boys 400 meter dash. Amador Valley with the lead with 26 points. Castro Valley in second with 18 points. And James Logan in third place with 17 points. However, I think that might have changed by now. After the boys 800 meter run. And the boys 100 meter dash. Maybe changing some things there. The next event on the track is going to be the girls 300 meter hurdles as they set the hurdles back up onto the track. In the meantime, the pole vaulting competition continues as we're still sitting at 13 feet 6 inches. We were down to three jumpers, or excuse me, three pole vaulters left as we try to wind down to see who takes the championship in that event. So, let me recap the top three finishers in the boys' 800 meter run. It was Adler Faulkner with a score of 1 minute 57, or 53 seconds, 53.92 seconds. He wins it all. In second place was Austin Orr. All the, or, I mean, so, I'm sorry, Dante Hay out of Maria Carrillo with a final score of 1 minute, 54.14 seconds, and then Austin Orr finishes third with a time of 1 minute and 54.86 seconds. In the meantime, we also have the girls' long jump taking place out on the track. Jump her away, and we have a fault. Looks like she stepped over the line. Well, the weather certainly has been consistent all day. It's got a little warmer earlier. It feels like it's cooling off again. We've had a consistent breeze. The breeze is a little bit cooler now than it was before. And here's the boys 800 meter champions receiving their medals to the cheer of the crowd here at Edwards Stadium. Congratulations again to them. 
And just think, this could have been the race where Eugene Hamilton could have really set impressive records, but he wanted to try to get it in a different race. He wanted to get it in the 1600 this year. But he was far and wide the best in the state with a mark of 1 minute and 50 seconds, or 50.19 seconds. It's better than the next best, which is Ivan Gonzalez out of Ridgeview in the Central Coast, or Central California, with a time of 1 minute and 50.59 seconds. So taking some time here in between the boys' 800-meter run and the girls' 300-meter hurdles as they have to set up the hurdles to get them ready. And long jumper away. In the meantime, folks, might as well let you know that Play On Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to highlights and great videos. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And also catch our content on YouTube. Playonsports.com, your destination for high school sports. And the girls on the far side of the track are taking their mark for the 300 hurdle. So we've got three different events going on currently. We've got the 300 meter hurdles, which is set to go. The boys pole vault and the girls long jump. And they're off in the girls 300 meter hurdles. In lane one is Janique Malik out of Pittsburgh. Lane two, Megan Fletcher from Amador Valley. Lane three, Mariah Walker from Freedom. Lane four, Lauren McCoy from Arcata. Lane five, Carly Scholes from St. Mary's. Lane six is Sasha Newman from Deer Valley. Lane seven, Miranda Nile from Castro Valley. And lane eight, Brookie Villanueva from Amador Valley. And right now, it is Carly Schulz from St. Mary's pacing this race. One although, set of hurdles left. Although she's catching some heat now from the inside lanes. But it will be Carly Schulz from St. Mary's, the junior, hanging on for the victory in the girls' 300-meter hurdles. We'll let you know what her time was as soon as it comes through. Congratulations to her on that victory. The to give you a sense of the previous record here at these championships, it was a 40.86 by Natasha Neal from James Logan in 1998. <laughs> And there we go, the updated boys standings here after the 800 meter run. And it's Castro Valley leading in the team rankings after 11 events scored with a point total of 34 points. And second is James Logan with 27 points. And third is Amador Valley with 26 points. So that race for second getting quite interesting between James Logan and Amador Valley. The pole vault bar has been pushed up now to 13 feet 9 inches. Trying to get word on how many participants we have left on the pole vault. There was three remaining when it was at 13 feet 6 inches. It's been moved up to 13.9. Still not sure if anybody was eliminated before they raised it. And as that's going on, the boys are now getting set for the 300 meter hurdle. They're looking to get this off fairly quickly as they're taking their warm ups. 
And in that boys 300 meter hurdle, lane one will have Carlos Portillo from Fort Bragg, a senior. Connor Speck, a senior from Las Lomas in lane two. Alex Nathurda, a sophomore from Maria Carrillo in lane three. Lavelle Hamlin out of Deer Valley, a senior in lane four. Jalen Doss in lane five, the junior from Hercules. Sam Peters, a senior from Amador Valley in lane six. Colton Tyler from Monta Vista, a senior in lane seven. And another senior in lane eight, this time from Sonoma Valley, is Greg Majancalda. Pull Valter away for the 13-9, and he hesitates and slows up, and something didn't feel right. He'll give it another go. 13.9. It's just amazing every time we keep turning back to this pole vault and how it just continues to climb and climb and how they're still resetting the new standard every time. As they like to say, literally raising the bar. That's that it is. That it is indeed. And they're about to get the girls on the podium here from the 300 meter hurdles. Pull Valter up and he's going to fall well short. He just didn't seem right on either attempt there. Didn't fully go for it. But that one's going to count that time. We get the final numbers here for our champion, Carly Scholes, a 44.45. Good enough for first place. In second place was Mariah Walker with a 44.88 time. And then McCoy, or McCoy, I'm sorry, with a 44.98. Those are your top three finishers. And I think Dave alluded to it. No one will be representing for the at-large at the girls' 300-meter hurdles except the top three. As the boys prepare for the 300 meter hurdles, the record at these championships was set in 2006 by David Kleck from California High School in San Ramon. And what a sight that is for Carly Schultz to bring home the championship. One would only wonder what would happen if Sasha Wallace decided to run the 300-meter hurdles, an event that she does not participate in. She only sticks to the 110 or the 100. Yeah, that's, that's certainly another factor when it comes to track and field events. I mean, there's champions who are in the 100, and there's no way they could. And, and some of them, that's just their niche. 300 meter runners that's their niche and they couldn't you know win in each yeah, other they're so similar you know why couldn't they do both but yeah it is quite a difference and so that now brings the updated women team rankings after 12 events scored after you include the girls 300 meter hurdles to san leandro still in first place with 38 points newark memorial now in second place with 32 points and Castro Valley in third place with 24 points. We're off here in the boys' 300-meter hurdle race. I already gave you the eight participants that will be racing in this race. And look at that man in the bright yellow shirt making a hard charge. I believe that's Sam Peters out of Amador Valley. As he is coming down to the stretch, Sam Peters trips over one hurdle but still has the lead. He needs the last hurdle to clear, and now it's going to be a foot race between him and his competitor, Jalen Doss, out of Hercules, as they do hit the one last hurdle. And it looked, oh! oh. Hurdles getting the best of runners here. Towards the end of the race. Sam Peters, who clipped the, the second to last hurdle. I want to say that Jalen Doss of Might Hercules may have got him right at the finish line.
by a neck. That's as closest as we've seen of a finish since the uh, boys. 110 meter hurdles, that was pretty close. Or With Eugene. Oh, okay, right, so the, the 1600 Hill. meter run, right. I'm sorry. And I think you're right. I want to say that Jalen Doss did quite, in fact, nudge out Sam Peters for first place. And let's just see how close this was. He did get him it, at the end. We're going to see how close it was. So Doss with a 37.87. And Peters with a 37.88. Oh, wow. So again, just by a nose, and that's... These are the fun ones to witness is those ones where it's just by a nose and that's right. as close as you can get. Fantastic finish. And like you mentioned, if Peters doesn't nick that hurdle, you know, the final hur uh, second to, to last set of hurdles there, he may hold on to win that. That could have just been the difference for him. And so that will conclude the boys' 300-meter hurdles. Such a close finish there between Sam Peters and Jalen Doss. But it will be Jalen Doss getting the victory over Sam Peters. Sam Peters, that was his race, the 300 hurdles. With a 37.91 mark earlier in the season, that had him at 12th best nationally. And yet Jalen Doss taking his race away from him after Peters made connection with a hurdle, a couple hurdles. And so I'm sure Peters isn't too happy with how that race finished. Next event out on the track is going to be the girls' 200-meter dash. And we're going to be welcoming back Gabrielle Cantrell in that one as the favorite. And once again, you have a situation here really quickly where you wonder why uh, Marquise Morris wasn't involved in this race. This was a race that he had dominated all throughout the year with a 37.19 mark earlier this month on May 8th at the EBAL Championships. And... Maybe he just didn't have a good preliminary race or just bowed out kind of like, uh, like Eugene Hamilton did. Who knows why Marquise Morris wasn't in the 300-meter hurdle. But whatever the case, you got to give all the credit to Jalen Doss. He sure ran his hardest and earned that victory over both Sam Peters and Lavelle Hamlin the other two of the top three finishers. Getting ready for the girls' 200-meter dash. It'll be Jessica Ram Rams Rasmussen out of Tamil Pies, Brianna Guillory and LaShaw Hamlin, both out of Deer Valley, Gabriel Cantrell, as you alluded to, from San Leandro, and then Miani Brown and Camille Deadweiler from Newark Memorial, as well as Miriama Hilburn from Pinole Valley, and Margaret, Margaret Wabuzi out of International. Just to fill people in on the events that are currently going on out there as we prepare for the 200-meter dash by the girls, we still have the boys' pole vault, which is currently setting the bar at 13 feet 9 inches, and we also have the girls' long jump, which is continuing to take place. As we get a jump there. A jump will mean we'll start over, and it will give me really quick time to update the boys' team standings after that 300-meter hurdle race. Castro Valley in first place with 34 points. Amador Valley now tied for first place with 34 points with Castro Valley. And then James Logan in third place with 27 points. As the boys' 300-meter hurdles champion takes their medals. Peters took his off rather quickly. I think he might be a little disappointed that he didn't get first, uh, but still a fantastic job coming in second and job well done to all those boys and 
now the 200 meter dash race. Can Gabrielle Cantrell get her second victory here today? She won the 100 meter dash with a time of 12.15 seconds over Camille Deweiler, who was finished with a 12.37 second second place finish, and Brianna Guillory, who finished third with 12.63 seconds as in the 100 meter dash. They're all in this 200 meter dash. As we mentioned earlier, Ashton Purvis in 2010 from St. Elizabeth High School out of Oakland, who had the record for the 100 meter dash that year in these championships, also had the record in the 200. And so the gun has fired off, and the girls are gearing up, ready to go. And it's Cantrell right now in the lead in lane four. And Cantrell distancing herself from the rest of the crowd. And Cantrell will go on to win easily once again. I got to tell you, Mike, I'm, when you see the same athlete win in multiple races and, and by about the same margin, it sure is impressive. Gabrielle Cantrell just looks head over heels the best runner on the track when right. the girls are out there. And, I, you know... She's going to be fun to watch next week in the state championships. Obviously, she's going to have uh, quite a big step up in competition. But today, she is certainly number one and been doing a fantastic job. I agree. She's the best runner I've seen all day today as well with a 24.70 mark. She will take home first place. In, yep. in second is Lashal Hamlin with a 25.11 Second, and then Miani Brown, 25.25 to finish in third. And by seeing those times, we see that Gabrielle Cantrell just uh, beat her prelim time. Yeah. Uh, by 24.74 yesterday, dropped it to 24.7 today. So continuing to improve there. We're going to look at the curls 200 meter dash times here in the state of California and see where her time would stand up. 24.7 good. Not better than her personal best of 23.97 seconds which she set at the Mount Sac Relays back on April 19th of this year. Which is 7th best in the state of California. Ariana, Ariana Washington, a junior out of Poly. Uh, right now the current state leader with a 23.18 seconds in the 200 meter. Ariana Washington, wow. And certainly she'll be the favorite next week with in a the, time like that. Yeah, she is the fastest girl in the state in both the 100 and the 200. Polly, as a team, the best in the 4x100 relay and the 4x400 relay for girls. Well, the girls having done their part, the boys' 200-meter dash will follow as the boys are out on the track taking their little warm-up sprints. And you'd have to think with that victory now, San Leandro going to close in a little bit on Newark Memorial, although Memorial, who was... Oh, I'm sorry. San Leandro, who does have the lead, is going to further incre increase their, read, their lead just a little bit. Sorry for stumbling there, folks. Newark Memorial will gain some points, but San Leandro has far and away blown out the rest of the competition in these girls' races. A flawless effort from the San Leandro Pirates today. They did finish second in one race and that was Courtney Smyers Jones finishing second to Sasha Wallace in the girls 100 but other than that San Leandro has taken first in their other three events with Gabrielle Cantrell bringing home two of those three events by herself Cantrell bent over at the podium 
as she looks out of breath and worn out. And now they're setting the pole to 14. So that's still going strong. But look at Gabrielle Cantrell. Still leaning over, all smiles with the bright orange headband. And Cantrell, only a junior. Think about the kind of attention she'll receive next year. It'll probably be Sasha. Oh, and the, the pole vaulter clears. He did. Clears the 14-foot mark with ease. That was a, may have been the best vault I've seen all day. And I think he's the only one left. So they're going to raise it up once more for him. But we'll see if Gabrielle and Gabriella Cantrell can finally upset Ariana Washington in states. Like I said, two juniors, both very fast, powerful runners. And yeah, San Leandro now upping their point total to 48 points as far as the women team rankings go. Newark Memorial in second place with 40 points and Deer Valley in third place with 30 points. So just to give a little bit of information on the pole vault situation, you know, it, as impressive as 14 feet is to clear, you know, it, by anyone's standards for, for that matter, the record was set in 1987 at 17 feet 8 inches. So we're still ways off of that, over almost, you know, close to 4 feet higher than that. But... Uh, that was by Brent Burns of Akalanes in 1987. 17 foot was also cleared by Justin Miller out of Cal High in 2008. And just last year, no, excuse me, two years ago, no, last, yeah, last year, year, 2012, yeah. Colin Barber of San Ramon Valley High School hit 16 feet 7 inches. We're getting set for the boys' 200 meter dash coming up soon. Lane one will be Hugh Pagan out of Ukiah, Jr. Lane two will be Herbie Polk, the senior from Maria Carrillo. Lane three will be Austin Harper, the senior from El Cerrito. And then Takaris McKinley, who's the fastest man in the North Coast section right now when, after winning the boys' 100-meter dash. He will be in lane four for the 200-meter dash. Alexis Robinson is in lane five from Eureka. Christian Corbin in lane six from Novato. Darnell Roberson from Amador Valley is senior in lane seven. And Kyle Dalton from Piedmont in lane eight. And what a race I think it's going to come down to between Takaris McKinley, the 100-meter dash winner, and Alexis Robinson. Remember, Alexis Robinson had that big victory earlier today as well. His victory coming. They're off. And so here we go. And coming down the stretch, it looks like it's Takaris McKinley right now. Takaris McKinley in a close one. And actually it is going to be lane six, Christian Corbin with the victory from Novato. Christian Corbin stealing the show at the end. Yeah, Christian Corbin actually won that race by a good margin there towards the end, kind of broke away. McKinley looks like held on for second, but nice finish, very strong by Corbin. And we've got the Novato contingency directly to our right, who is standing up and cheering very loudly, as, as well they should, and fantastic race by Corbin. Hopefully that win for Christian Corbin will bring the spirits up for the city of Novato, who suffered a heartbreaking loss yesterday in the North Coast Section Division I Lacrosse Championships at home, a game in which I was a part of on the broadcast. As they're visiting league rival, the Redwood Giants, the sixth seed, went to Novato yesterday and beat up on the Novato Hornets, who were the fourth seed. 
by a final score of 13 to seven. So I'm seeing here that the previous record holder of the 200 meters here at these NCS championships was set in 2007 by none other than Javid Best, who went on to star at California. And it's funny you say that because right now the overall state leader is Kalfani Muhammad out of Notre Dame High School in the southern section, and he will be going to the University of California. So just think about the kind of speed right now that Sonny Dykes is working with with his uh, to his to uh, you know weapon weaponry wise as he's going to be getting to Carus McKinley. We've seen his speed here today, and the fastest guy in the state of California, Kalfani Muhammad Corbin, twenty one point six three. Good enough to get the victory here in the boys' 200-meter dash. Takaris McKinley finishing second with 21.92. And then Austin Harper also with a 21.92. And so is Robinson. So it was actually very close for that 21.92. At least that's what the little scoreboard thing was showing me here. A three-way tie for second place. Can you believe that? Three-way tie for second place with Austin Harper, Takaris McKinley, and Alexis Robinson all getting the exact same time of 21.92 seconds. That's unbelievable. A little bit of parity going on there, I guess, at a high level. So you'd have to think this will be an exception where even though normally it's the top three to go, the top four are going to have to represent the North Coast section here for the boys' 200-meter dash, even though that time is short of the at-large time of 21.63 seconds. But that should be the last event that we will be part of broadcasting here at the Meet of Champions. And for Christian Corbin, a junior out of Novato, he'll be getting a chance to not only try to win state, but come back next year and defend his title. Christian Corbin kind of coming out of nowhere to get that win. Looked like it was going to be Takaris McKinley to win that race, and then Christian Corbin just steaming out in front. As we're settling things out here. The pole vaulting still going on. Right now, the bar is being set at 14 feet. Fourteen feet is the mark right now in the boys' pole vault. And we, we shall see what's going to happen here. And I believe that was Clint Bishop out of Liberty attempting the 14-foot jump and knocking the bar down. Another competitor will get ready to size up the 14-foot bar that has been raised. 
And Dave, you have any information or we're gonna keep rolling? We're gonna keep rolling. Here we go, the 14 foot pole vault is what we're keeping our eyes on here at the moment. And we got the girls coming out for the 3,200 meter run, which is gonna be eight times around the track. And I'm looking at this pole vault. Can he get it 14 feet? He can! Wow. What a jump there from the man in the yellow tank top. Clears the bar. And so they will have to raise it once more for him. Girls are getting set for the 3,200 meter run. There's 24 girls that will compete. Marion Gong, the winner in the race earlier today. One of the first races we covered in that girls 1,600 meter run. And she will now be taking place here in the 3,200 meter run. Had the best time in the prelims. Briggy Leach from Camp Lindo. Megan McCandless from Granada. Brooke Starn, a freshman from Monta Vista. Kelly Collins from Akalanis. Christine Bayless from San Ramon Valley. Morgan Coonfield from McKinleyville. Mary Orders from Camp Lindo, a sophomore. Daribe Abdu, a sophomore from Berkeley. Sonia Zhu, a junior from Alameda. Paloma Romero, a junior from Piner. Like I said, these are all the contestant or the girls competing here in the 3,200 meter run. There's more. Molly Dick from uh, Lick Wilmerding. Maria Carrillo from, uh, or I'm sorry, Andrea Natali from Maria Carrillo, Carrillo, a sophomore. As the gun sounds and they're off. Clara McLeod, a senior from Albany. Julia Cook, a sophomore from Bishop O'Dowd. Aaron Thomas, a junior from Mendocino. Delaney White, a freshman from Santa Rosa. Sophie Epstein, a senior from Redwood. Saskia Van Ameren Egberts, a freshman from Casa Grande. Sophia Noto, a sophomore from Sir Francis Drake. Alyssa Beyer, a sophomore from Bishop O'Dowd. Michelle Lapointe, a senior from Castro Valley. Elizabeth Hu, a freshman from Mission San Jose. And Andy Von Eschen, a junior from Lick Wilmerding. Those are the 24 girls competing here in the 3,200 meter run. And I'm currently looking to see who is part of the Bay Area's best in the 3,200 meter, or at least in the North Coast section, who's the best. as they're just about to finish up the first lap here. And I know the overall state leader in the 3200s is Sarah Baxter out of Simi Valley with a 10 minute and 6.74 second run. Right now, a lot of Granada fans getting loud. They want to see either Marion Gong or Megan McCandless come away with the victory in this one. Yeah, Marion Gong was impressive when she came back at the end of the 1600 meter race to take that one. See if she can do it at twice the distance. Certainly one of the better long distance runners in the area for sure. One of the best cross country runners the area has seen in a long time. Jenna Pianine, 
had the North Coast section best time so far this year. 10 minutes and 37.94 seconds. However, she is not in the race today. Just a very slow, deliberate pace here as they come around. There's that one big group in the front, then a little bit of space, and then a group of girls towards the back. Update on the pole vault. The bar has been raised to 14 feet 6 inches, so it's gone up another 6 inches, and a vaulter just clears it. And it's that guy once again in the yellow tank top. I can't quite make out what school he is from or what his name is, but he sure has been impressive in his last two jumps. He continues to set the standard of which North Coast section pole vaulting is about here in the year 2013. And right now, Christine Bayless is in second place in lane, or who, uh, who started in lane six. But the race just keeps changing up. You never know who's going to end out on top. as this is now lap five in which the girls are embarking on here. People still in the stands here. And rightfully so, these stands are packed what a difference it makes from earlier this morning till now. These types of races that you get into these long races like this 3,200 meter, you really get those wide gaps from start from the uh, racer in the front to the runner all the way at the back. And, and essentially in, the, in this type of race, I wouldn't be surprised if we get into a situation where there's some lapping going on where you know the, the people up front start having to worry about that traffic of catching up to the tail end because we're still a ways from the finish and we can already see that they've got about a half a track length lead from front to back. So now they have hit, I'm sorry, they were on their third lap earlier. This is now their fourth lap. As it's showing how much laps are left on that sign near the clock mark. And yeah, you're right. There is definitely big separation right now between the girls in the front and then the girls in the back. And to the girls in the back, I say I wouldn't even make it around more than once. So, <laughs> so uh, they got nothing to head their, hang their heads down on because uh, I think probably the vast majority of people in the crowd would be struggling to get around the track more than a, more than a time or two. So. Sure. I think it's Brooke Starn right now in the lead from Monta Vista. Freshman. And this is the type of race where you really see the testament of a human body and the kind of strengths and limits it can be pushed to. Pole vaulting bar has gone up to 14.9, so another three inches. 
And it's that man in the yellow tank top again. Getting ready. He has been very impressive his last couple of jumps. We're starting to get a little bit of distance from the girl out front of this 3,200 meter race. Another new leader, by the way. Seems to have a bit of a comfortable lead at this point with two laps to go. And the fans rooting on Megan McCandless, who right now is in third place and is trying to make that comeback in the black and gold shorts. And I think the guy in the yellow tank top who just did the pole vault finally hit the bar after clearing it successfully a couple times. And the update after the boys' 200-meter dash looks like this after Christian Corbin's winning time of 21.63 seconds and then a three-way tie for second place between Takaris McKinley, Austin Harper, and Alexis Robinson. It has the updated score looking like this. Castro Valley and Amador Valley still tied for first place with 34 points. And James Logan in second place with 27 points. You mentioned Javid Best, who has the best mark in that from Salesian. Went on to play to Cal. Got drafted by the Detroit Lions and may be in danger of having a very, very short NFL career. One would only hope he can make a comeback, but you don't know if that's going to be the case. One lap remaining here in this girls' 3,200-meter run as concussions have just taken Javid Best out of the game of football, at least for the time being. Yeah, he's definitely had a tough go. He had that problem at Cal as well where he had had the concussion problem and unfortunately it's followed him on to the professional ranks in the NFL. And now I know you're going to start looking at the uh, record times here. What you got for us, Dave? I'm tracking it down. Is it still Sherry Williams with her clip in 1978? It certainly is at 10 minutes and 6 seconds. Sherry Williams out of Livermore. Another long-lasting record, although just last year, Julia Maxwell from Branson had a 10-minute, 27-second mark, which is good enough for seventh best in the history of these championships. And just the year before her, Carrie Verdon from Camp Alindo had the sixth best time ever in these championships with 10.22. So there has been some recent success in these championships. The winner crosses the finish line as do the second and third place finishers tremendous amount of respect for these young girls who run this 3200 meter run this is just quite impressive to have that type of endurance and stamina to go that far and to never stop running to, in most cases, speed up towards the end and it, just to control that steady pace over that period of time of 10, 11 minutes plus is, is quite impressive. And look at Christian Corbin down below us, all smiles with his gold medal. And we will get you the top three finishers here in this girls' 3,200-meter run in just a second. And here comes the final runners down the, down the uh, home stretch. And just look how they keep up that pace, even, even towards the end here. Uh, you look at these girls who are coming about a minute behind the winners, and still I'm looking at the pace, and very impressive. What I loved about that is, even though the girls were huffing and puffing at 
stages of that last lap. They just finished as hard as they can towards the end. Their legs are so strong. And they should update the scores coming up. We still have the boys' 3,200-meter run to follow, as well as the girls' 4x400-meter relay and the boys' 4x400-meter relay, and then that will conclude today's coverage or today's events here at the North Coast Section Meet of Champions, presented by Farmers, live from Edwards Stadium, Goldman Field, on the campus of Berkeley, UC Berkeley in Berkeley, California. seen some interesting races and now the boys are getting ready and the St. Joseph fan section getting loud once again as they will have three racers competing in this boys 3200 meter run Michael and Matthew Murphy twin brothers and then Gabe Arias Sheridan as well. Remember, it was heartbreak for Luis Rodriguez. Who finished 0 .02 seconds off the CIF at large required time of 4 minutes and 16.38 seconds. That was the last time we've heard fans from St. Joseph make noise. And now they'll have a chance to make noise once again. Hopefully we'll also get some updates on the girls long jump coming. The girls long jump continues on the near side of the track in front of us, to our left. As we've got some camera coverage of that right now for the latest jump. And looks like they're gonna call foul. And they're almost about to start running through the placers in the girls 3200 meter run. After that, I will give you the 24 participants for the boys 3200 meter run. Okay, so here we go. In first place for the girls 3200 meter run was Brihe Leach out of Camp Alindo. Second place was Morgan Coonfield. And third place was Megan McCandless. Quick update on the long jump situation. 17 feet, five inches. It's the longest jump down there as the girls continue to battle it out for the long jump championship here at the NCS Track and Field Championships. All right, here is the field for the boys 3,200 meter run. Once again, 24 participants to compete. It's John Lawson, senior from Sir Francis Drake, followed by Blair Herlock, a junior from De La Salle. Aiden Goltra, a junior from Camp Alindo. Tyler Hansen, a senior from Miramani. Danny Stalters out of Northgate. Luke Williams, a junior from De La Salle. Ryan Anderson, a junior from Maria Carrillo. Adam Hathaway is a senior from Camp Alindo. Cameron Tu is a junior out of Alameda. Zach Hansey, a senior from San Ramon Valley. 
Julian Frost, a senior out of Piedmont High. Andrew Melendez, a junior from Bishop O'Dowd. Jamie Silva, a senior from Piner. A Gabe Arias Sheridan, a junior from St. Joseph. Efren Reyes, a junior from Piner. Harrison Luft, a senior from Maria Carrillo. Clayton Hutchins, a junior, a senior from Sir Francis Drake. Ben Scholes, a senior from El Molino. Austin Orr, a senior from Sonoma Academy. Nolan Peterson, a senior from Washington High. And then the Matthew brother, or the Murphy brothers, Michael and Matthew, both out of St. Joseph, both sophomores. Matt Jenkins, a sophomore from Lick Wilmerding. And Jax Reef, a senior from Sonoma Academy. Sonoma Academy, St. Joseph, and Maria Carrillo, as well as Piner, with multiple athletes here, and so is Camp Lindo. Camp Lindo with two, and De La Salle. So a lot of multiple athletes here involved, or uh, teams with multiple athletes involved here in this 3,200 meter run. The most is St. Joseph with three. And for the boys, 3,200. I'm looking at some stats here from pep, prepcaltrack.com. Quick update on the pole vaulting situation. Sure. We just had a pole vaulter clear 15 feet 8 inches. So huge vault as that pole, as the, uh, the bar continues to rise. Daniel Stalter is a runner in this race. And he is 33rd in the state with a clip of 9 minutes, 16.76 seconds. Took him a 9 minute, 32.2 second mark to qualify for the position in which he positioned here today. And yeah. They are about to raise that bar once again here in the pole vault. And this is really the example, Dave, of the uh, tortoise and the hare, right? As far as these races are concerned. That's it. The 3,200 meter. So we see the girl from the 3,200 meter, the, the victors on the podiums accepting their gold medals and silver bronze. And they will be moving on to the state championships next week. Congratulations to them again. And I was looking down below, I saw a girl with medals at San Leandro wearing a cow hat, and so I had to see which one was it that is probably going to cow, and I found out that is Nige Jones down below us, wearing her medals and wearing a cow hat, so she will be calling this campus her own for years to come after she earned a scholarship to cow. We've hit the, the halfway point of our 3,200 meter boys race and after the girls 3200 meter run the updated standings look like this I don't know why they put the men team rankings down after 13 events scored they might have to change that they give us the men standings again which we know is C Castro Valley and Amador Valley tied for first place with 34 points James Logan in third with 27 points But 
But the St. Joseph fans really loud here in support of their runners. As the runners pass by, heading on to three laps remaining, the crowd is cheering them on each time passed. This is one of those races where you'll take all the motivation you can and all the uh, cheers and everything to keep you going. Keep grinding it out. Three laps to go. And you can see why these fans here from St. Joseph are getting quite loud as Gabe Arias Sheridan right up there up front with the with the big pack up there in the front John Lawson from Sir Francis Drake also in the mix over there I think their other two participants are on the back end of it yeah St. Joseph's other two the Murphy brothers trailing in the backpack And here we go again. So the crowd to their feet. And look at the crowd willing Gabe as he's starting to come up to the side of the other competitors. And make his way. Two laps remain. And you can see the crowd favorite in front of us is beginning to fade now, Mike. Yeah. Just a bit. As now two runners have passed him and he is now in fourth place. Or make that fifth place, I'm sorry. Long jump still going on. And I believe pole vault is now finalized. At least we haven't seen anyone attempt a pole vault in quite some time. And the mark has still stayed at 15.8, although I do see someone with the pole in hand possibly getting ready. And the final bell rings here for the boys. Last lap here in the 3,200 meter run. And these St. Joseph fans trying to will Gabe on for one more final spurt of speed if he can get it. It looks like he's about to close in on the fourth place competitor. I don't know if he has enough in the tank to fully close in on first place, but he is at least taking fourth place away. Well, and again, what a lot of this comes down to is that at large spot. Can you make the time to get to the next? level at the state championships next week so the CIF at large time is 9 minutes and 9.03 seconds right now the clock is at 8 minutes and 54 seconds so it looks like that at large bid is going to be out of reach uh, for all of the competitors but again the top three get the automatic and we have a victor and we do. And we also have a second place and third place finisher as well. And the St. Joseph fan favorite. Gabe Arias Sheridan comes in fourth place. And we'll get the final results here as soon as we can for you just want to thank you folks for tuning in to what has been a great day so far out here in Berkeley for the 2013 North Coast section meet of champions and here comes our final participant of the boys 3200 and the final athlete has crossed the line. So, again, nice to see everyone cross the line and complete that race.
And the bar on the pole vault has been raised to 16 feet. Even. So it is still going strong. And it will be John Lawson finishing first with a time of 9 minutes and 12.10 seconds. Then Goltra with 9 minutes and 16.53. And then Herlock in third place. As far as the boys' 3,200 meters records in this championships for the NCS, it was Richard Kimball from De La Salle, 1974 with 8 minutes 43 seconds. In fact, the top three were all from the 70s. We had 74, 77, and 1972, followed by 81, which it tells you a little bit how the – sometimes we see trends in the different events and sports, and really I think the long-distance running of 3,200 meters, for example, was a much bigger event back in those days where more people were interested in, in – and becoming uh, really good at the long distance running where we've kind of seen maybe a little bit of a shift where more of the um, athletes like to go for the, the, the dashes, whether it be the 100-yard dash, 200-yard dash, maybe the 200-yard hurdles, et cetera. The long distance running has maybe be, kind of slipped a little bit in preference for some of the athletes as to the focus. And that can vary a little bit, but, I mean, by the, by the numbers there, obviously the top three spots were back in the 70s. Uh, for the 3,200 meter top times. Up next, the 4x400 relay for the girls as they make their way onto the track. This situation here where each girl runs around the entire track to 400 meters, passes a baton. So one full lap each. One full lap each. Girls 4x400 four meter relay as well as the boys 4x400 four meter relay will be the final two events on the track today. We've been treated to a lot of good ones, a lot of close finishes, a lot of impressive performances. And looking forward to two more. Girls long jump again also still in full effect here been going on for quite some time as well so we look to crown a champion in the girls long jump as well as still the boys pole vault right now the boys pole vault is what our cameraman is situated on as our top finishers for the boys 3200 meter run once again John Lawson finishing in first place with a time of 9 minutes and 12.10 seconds second place was Blair or, uh, Aiden Goltra with a time of 9 minutes and 16.53 seconds. And in the third place was Blair Herlock with a time of 9 minutes and 17.26 seconds. As for the teams that will be involved here, in this girls 4x400 meter relay race, eight teams. California will be in lane one, led by Tyler Carr, Kaylin Delaney, Stephanie Carbo, and Madison Ricks. Amador Valley will be in lane two with Nicole Fetch, Jasmine Merchant, Elise, uh, Elise Kettner, and Brooke, Brookie Villanueva. Bishop O'Dowd will be in lane three with Keisha May, Kara Awakie, Lexi Lohman, and Allison Haywood. Lane four. Excuse me. Will be Monte Vista, uh, Monte Vista High School with Chloe Wynn, Nina Rondani, Mattingly Gebhardt, and Heidi Fearman. Lane five will be St. Mary's with Spencer Moore, Chloe Jenkins, Nia Joyner, and Zoe Campbell. And lane six will be Castro Valley with Miranda Nild, Ariana Alfaro, Brittany Lawson, and Braji Pointer. Lane seven will be San Lorenzo with Karima Marshall, Tajiana Ochekwu, Jasmine Penny, and Jajor Ledbetter. And in lane eight will be Freedom with Mariah Walker, Gianna Di Mercurio. 
Gianna Milana Di Mercurio, Madison LaPierre, and Ranjane Lillard. And a hush has taken over here at Edwards Stadium as we're getting ready for the gun to go off. And the gun has fired. And the race is off. California with two sophomores in their lineup with Tyler Carr and Kaylin Delaney. A senior and Stephanie Carbo, Madison Ricks a junior. Madison Ricks who last year had success. Is hoping they can get it done again this year. As they're coming up here on the final meters here for the first lap. Last year's 4x400 four meter relay champ was Bishop O'Dowd, who is in lane three. San Lorenzo looking strong in lane seven. It's all about that baton exchange, it looks like, is... Bishop O'Dowd in lane three. Got a pretty good handoff there. But also Monta Vista right out in front right now in lane four. As you alluded to, San Lorenzo, they lagged a little bit on their baton exchange. They were closing in quite quickly on the end of that first lap, but the baton exchange didn't go too well. We'll see if they have what it takes to still make up for that. Monta Vista definitely looking strong, as you alluded to, out in first place. For those at home, the fastest time for these championships was back in 2004. James Logan with a 3 minute 37 second point eight eight. And a hard charge there at the end by Amador Valley in lane two. And it's Elise Kettner for Amador Valley now storming out in front. I'm sorry, make that California high in lane one. So that's Stephanie Carbo right now out in front. She and Stephanie Carbo with a big time lead on Nina Rondani or uh, Mattingly Gebhardt for Monta Vista. Yeah, that what a huge burst by California there with Stephanie. I mean. Very impressive leg of the relay. And here, San Lorenzo contends to fight, continues to fight as they're closing in now on second place with Monta Vista. And again, a big burst by Cal at the, at the exchange. They tend to get a big burst right off the bat with that initial exchange and nice size lead. And this should be the last lap. Madison Ricks right now. Way out in front for California. San Lorenzo got passed big time. I'm trying to figure out who that is, but now she's going to pass Monta Vista. That's Chas or, uh, DeJour Ledbetter for San Lorenzo in fourth place. Right now it's Madison Ricks leading things for California. In second place is Heidi Fuhrman out of Monta Vista. And in third place is Allison Haywood out of Bishop O'Dowd. That was a great... Uh, final leg for Bishop O'Dowd. They really got some good ground to come up towards third, but this is all Cal. And it will be Madison Ricks with the victory for the California Grizzlies, followed by Heidi Fearman for Monta Vista and then Allison Haywood for Bishop O'Dowd. Quite the impressive relay for Cal High as they dominate And Madison Ricks, have yourself a race. The way she took that baton and sprinted out front, there was nobody catching her. 
And I'm curious to see the final results for the girls. We've missed out on them a couple times. We should finally get them after this one because this is the last event for the girls right here. So after this, no one can collect points. As for the boys coming up, things might get a little interesting. And the reason why I say that is because James Logan and Castro Valley are not in the boys 4x400 mix. Now, if Maria Carrillo were to go on and win this race, that would give him a 10 point, so that would give him 36. That would mean Amador Valley would pretty much have to not place in order for them to relinquish the win. So this is pretty much going to be Amador Valley's chance to get the win. And it's going to be their 4 by 400 meter relay team that's going to break a tie to do it. Like I said, they would have to finish either 7th or 8th and not collect any points in order for them to not win. So Just watch out for De La Salle, Maria Carrillo, and Amador Valley, what's going to happen here with no James Logan and no Castro Valley competing. James Logan, at least in the girls' 4x400 meters, history tells you they have six of the top ten best times at these championships. It's typically been an event that they've had great success in over the years as, as we're still awaiting the final times for the girls' 4x400 four relay as the boys are warming up out there for their turn. Showing the 3,200 meter run champions receiving their medals on the pedestal. So I and was actually wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was St. Mary's <laughs> ended up winning the race. I am so sorry for that, folks. I gave California the win, but it was actually St. Mary's who took home the team title in the girls' 4x400 meter relay race. I'm so sorry, folks, for that. Mistake, it was Spencer Moore, Chloe Jenkins, Nia Joyner, and Zoe Campbell. Correction on my behalf. I thought, he, you know, I was, I was thinking at the end there that the person who came, because Cal High actually came in, is it seventh? Yeah. Followed by Amador in eighth. So you're right. Yeah, congratulations, St. Mary's. St. Mary's, who has always had a strong track program. And I totally missed the call on that one. Well, I followed your lead. We both we both missed that one. It's hard to see from up here. Well, it's hard too once they um, they they don't stay in those lane assignments as soon as it breaks off. Agreed. So St. Mary's, heck of a job. Hey, congratulations to St. Mary's who does it all with no seniors. Spencer Moore, a junior. Chloe Jenkins, a sophomore. Nia Joyner, a junior, and Zoe Campbell, a sophomore. Oh, you're absolutely right, though. When you get in your lane assignments on these on these uh, 400 meters, those lane assignments mean nothing as soon as you make it around the track. And then on top of that, uh, you know, there the, the a lot of the teams here have similar jerseys out there. The ones that you can really tell well throughout the day, quite frankly, have been Amador Valley. Yeah. With the gold and purple stand out pretty well. Monta Vista's got the red and black, which always stands out very well. And you can't miss O'Dowd with that big O on the front of theirs. And you can't miss O'Dowd. So if it's outside of there, then you're playing a little bit of a guessing game from up in the booth because uh, it can be a little bit tricky. Of course, now when St. Mary's goes to get their awards, they're all in the red tops. And they're off here in the boys' 4x400 meter relays, relay race. In lane one was Campolindo. Lane two, De La Salle. Lane three, Maria Carrillo. Lane four is Hercules. Lane five, San Leandro. Lane six, Amador Valley. Lane seven, Los Lomas. And lane eight, Deer Valley. With Parker Lothamer for Campolindo. Kevin Griffin for De La Salle. Herbie Polk for Maria Carrillo. Jalen Doss for Hercules. Ruben Baker for San Leandro. Josh Slayton for Amador Valley. Jamani Walker for Los Lomas. And Adonis Johnson 
in the first lap. In the second lap for each team, for Camp Lindo, it's going to be Harrison Hughes. For De La Salle, Marquise Morris. For Maria Carrillo, Dante Garcia. For Hercules, Armani Reynolds. San Leandro's Christian Carter. Amador Valley's Connor McKinnon. Las Lomas is Colton Hawkos. And Deer Valley's Lavelle Hamlin. As it's now those second guys receiving the batons. And out front, at the moment, looks like it's Armani Reynolds from Hercules. Getting ready to receive the batons for, for the third guys for each team. Camp Lindo is going to be Andy Van Hute. Alan, Mar Alan Marion for De La Salle, Dante Hay for Maria Carrillo, Marquise Davenport for Hercules, Tavian San Leandro for, or Tavian Anderson for San Leandro, Jamon Charles for Amador Valley, Jack Kane for Los Omas, and Jamari Threat for Deer Valley. As right now it's still Hercules in the lead with Armani Reynolds. Getting ready to hand off to Marquise Davenport. And he does. Hercules definitely looking strong as they're getting another big burst here from their third leg. It's going to take a lot to catch them at this point. Marquise Davenport, so fast and so strong. It all starts with that good start by Jalen Doss, who was already a winner here today. And then the fourth leg will involve Ryan Hoffman for Campolindo, Matthew Baldacci for De La Salle, Jake Viter for Maria Carrillo, uh, Antoon Prouse. For Hercules, Courtney Bazile for San Leandro, Darnell Robertson for Amador Valley, Connor Speck for Las Lomas, and Deontay Johnson for Deer Valley. Well, check out, check out these socks down here waiting to receive a baton. And there comes Darnell Robertson passing Hercules for Amador Valley. And now he gets his, uh, uh, make that Jamon Charles for Amador Valley. He grabs it off to Darnell Robertson. So you called it. Amador Valley was in terrific position coming into this final event, and this is going to be icing on the cake for Amador if they can complete this 4x400 four championship, which all indications are they're going to coast to it here. And for Darnell Robertson coming down the stretch, this would give his Amador Valley Dons the team title here for the boys in the 2013 North Coast Section Meet of Champions. And he will finish first, followed by Hercules. And then De La Salle. And so it will be the Amador Valley Dons winning here in the boys' 4x400 meter relay race. And with that win... They should have broken the tie with the Castro Valley Trojans and will be awarded the boys team title here at the Meet of Champions. And we can see now that the pole vaulting competition has also been wrapped up. The girls long jump competition has been wrapped up. So everything kind of comes to, to a close as far as the events are concerned here at Edwards Stadium, all kind of together at the, the same time. And what a day of events here. As we talked about earlier, as we talked about earlier, this is the first time we've both had the opportunity to call track and field on the broadcasting mic. And I've had a, I've had a wonderful experience here today, seen some top-notch athletes, saw some terrific finishes. And I don't know about you, Mike, but... I think this is, uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't mind doing this again from the from up top. Yeah, you know, I, I had a good time, and, and fans, I, I hope that uh, you enjoyed the broadcast. I, I know we we uh, I made a bit of a mistake there at the end with that four by four hundred meter relay for the girls, but uh, hopefully you did keep in mind that uh, this is our first time doing track and field, and I would love to be invited to come do this again. Now with a year under my belt, I'm sure I'll be a little bit more prepared next year but overall I, I thought Dave and I did a fantastic job like I said hopefully you thought the same and definitely the fantastic job was done by all the participants here today we were treated to some fantastic running and um, and 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 field events uh, were awesome as well and for the women the team rankings will look like this after the final events have been scored 15 in total it will be the San Leandro Pirates 
out of the WCAL, the West uh, County, Ath- uh, uh, the West Alameda County Athletic League. Winning the overall team title. Newark Memorial will finish second out of the Mission Valley Athletic League with 40 points. San Leandro with 48 points. The Newark Memorial Cougars in second place with 40 points. And then the Granada Matadors finishing third with 32 points, just narrowly edging out the Deer Valley Wolverines who had 30 points today to finish in fourth place. And so those are the top three finishers. And San Leandro sure did deserve it. I mean, we could talk about the effort today done as they took home gold in everything but one. The only event in which they did not take home the gold. Of course, they went up against it, though. They went up against Sasha Wallace in the hurdles, in that 100 hurdles. And they came so close with Courtney Smyers-Jones finishing in second place. But other than that, San Leandro won the 4 by 400 meter relay race on the feet of Camille Watson, Courtney Smyers-Jones, Nijay Jones, and Gabrielle Cantrell. Gabrielle Cantrell, who overall had probably the best day out of any runner we've seen. I think if, if we were doing an interview and we did give a player of the meet or, or the, you know, the, the, the mat, the meet, if we did an interview for who we thought was the best overall uh, athlete out here today, I think we would both agree that Gabriel Cantrell would be the girl as uh, she helped him win in everything. She played a part in the 4 by 100 meter relay race. She won the 200 meter dash as well as winning the 100-meter dash. And you can see why Newark Memorial was in second place. As right there with Gabriel Cantrell, finishing at the top was Camille Deadweiler. Finished second to Cantrell in the 100-meter dash. Finished fifth in the 200-meter dash. Taylor Kraft finishing fourth in that 100-meter hurdles. And then for Granada, how they were able to finish at the top is they did extremely well in them long-distance runs with uh, Marion Gong winning the girls' 1,600-meter race, storming back to win that one. And they had that third place finish in the 3,200 meter race. With Megan McCandless finishing third and Marion Gong finishing fourth. We're just waiting right now for the totals from the boys. To see where they rank. At least for the time being, we'll get you the winner uh, or the top three finishers here for the 4x400. Four it was Amador with a time of 3 minutes and 15.15 seconds for first place. Second place was Hercules with a time of 3 minutes and 16.59 seconds. And then in third place was Maria Carrillo with a time of 3 minutes and 17.99 seconds. Or 5.9 seconds, I'm sorry. De La Salle, who finished sixth in the 4x400. It'll be interesting to see if they place in the top three overall. Actually, they placed fourth in the 4x400, so that should give them some points. We'll see if it's enough for them to move into the top three. They were in fifth place, but 
do know that Castro Valley and James Logan didn't have a chance to collect points. I think how it's going to finish off is Amador Valley, and here we go. We don't have to think or guess no more. So Amador Valley will take the overall team title today with 44 points after 15 events scored over pretty, the weekend. In pretty convincing fashion too, Mike. I yeah. mean, you're looking, they, uh, they win it by 10 points, 44-34, so really a dominating performance by Amador, and congratulations to the Dons. Castro Valley finishing second place with 34 points, and then Maria Carrillo with their third place finish here in the 4x400, able to get past James Logan for third place overall in this NCS Meet of Champions finals. Did we ever get any information on the pole vaulters? I believe that's who's down at the uh, podium right now is our pole vaulting champions. Well, I see one of my guys, at least uh, from my alma mater, in the Cardinal tank top with the gold lettering across. A Liberty guy placing third makes me happy. Of course, we know you uh, being so uh, so much of a Stanford supporter, loving that Cardinal <laughs> red. Never. <laughs> I know, it came to a crossroads having to put on that cardinal red in high school. Despite being a Cal Bears fan. It was an awkward circumstance, really. As I'm looking at the pole vaulting. That was Clint Bishop. Who finished in third place for Liberty. And I can't quite call who finished first or second. Trying to see potentially if that could be a St. Mary's. But. No, St. Mary's uh, is white and red. That's right. Probably not good to speculate. It's Sure. I, I was thinking color scheme of St. Mary's College, but. Totally off. Yeah, close enough, though. They, they're very close. Hey, like I said, hey, wasn't the first time I've been off or you've been off. But uh, I think we did pretty well today. And we're still just awaiting the final results. But I, I think that might be it. Yeah, I don't... Sorry, folks, right now, our producer and my analyst are trying to figure things out. And when they do, they will let us know. Also, oh, the pole vaulting score hasn't been entered yet, so that could affect the boys' team scores. All right, folks, well, this is where we will wrap it up. Dave, any last words? No, just uh, congratulations again to all the athletes that came out today for the track and field championships for NCS. Pleasure. My first opportunity being here at Edwards Stadium. I thought it was a great venue. I thought it was a great day. Great crowd participation. Great working with you, Mike. Uh, Hans Webb on video. Tremendous. Buddy Tom from San Diego. What's the... You, you worked with Tom yesterday, didn't you, Mike? I did, I did. Like I said, uh, that for, for Novato, and I know Tommy feels this too, uh, I'm sure that with Christian Corbin winning his race, that might have uplifted the spirits of that city just for a little bit after the heartbreaking loss yesterday that Tom and I called in the 
NCS Division One Lacrosse Championship. So other other than that, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, congratulations to Amador. We know that regardless of what the pole vaulting score is, it's not going to affect the boys no, there. I don't, I don't think it's going to affect any of the top three, to tell you the truth. And I think the top three is kind of set in stone. And so that is how our day will end. So thank you, folks. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast this year of the 2013 North Coast Section Meet of Champions. The first time that uh, we have covered the track and field championships here for the North Coast Section. It was an honor of mine to do so, and I'm sure Dave, Tommy, and Hans all feel the same way. A beautiful venue here in Berkeley for track and field at the at the historical Edwards Stadium. And this is going to be where I sign off and, uh, and tell you all to have a great Memorial Day weekend. Stay tuned for further action here on PlayOnSports.com throughout the weekend as I know my next bit of games to call will be on Memorial Day Monday when Stephen Davies and I get together to give you guys three... Wonderful broadcast of baseball action from the Sac Joaquin section. Live from Zupo Field will be for the Sac Joaquin section Division 4, Division 5, and Division 6 baseball championship games. So for everyone involved, Hans Webb on the video and uh, Thomas Conroy on the video, I say thank you to Dave Schepler for being along here with me. I couldn't have done this by myself. It was good to have a partner to help me do it on the uh, broadcasting side. I am Michael K. Smith, also known as Mike on the Mic, signing out and saying so long from Berkeley here as we wrap up the North Coast Section Meet of Champions. Remember, your men team champs are Amador Valley, the Amador Valley Dons with a score of 44 points, and the women's team champs, team champs are the San Leandro Pirates with a team score of 48. Thank you so much for sticking around and staying tuned. Have a great weekend, folks.